Yesterday we defined kinematics as the study of motion without regard to what causes that motion. In other words, you guys told me yesterday that forces cause motion. We're going to look at the motion itself in this unit, but we're not going to pay any attention to the forces that cause that motion. That's next unit. That's called dynamics, and we'll focus on that in our next unit. But for this unit, it's just the motion itself. Now, there were two terms that we defined yesterday to lead off the class. They were a vector and a scalar. One of these has only magnitude. Magnitude meaning amount or size. One of these has both magnitude and direction. So the size and which direction it's pointing in. Which one is which? Yep. Good. Good. So a scalar has just magnitude. The, my mass is 73 kilograms. That's the magnitude, right? That's how much I weigh my mass. It's not 73 kilograms north, it's just 73 kilograms, magnitude only. The temperature of the air outside is minus 20 degrees Celsius. That's, that's a magnitude only. It's not, um, it's not minus 20 degrees Celsius to the west, it's just minus 20 degrees Celsius, a magnitude only. Okay, when I'm driving my car to Calgary, I might drive it at 110 kilometers per hour. Okay, that's a scalar because it's only the magnitude. Right? Now, if I say, on the other hand, 110 kilometers per hour to the north, which I could say, then that would be a vector. But as long as I'm describing only the magnitude, then I've got a scalar. If I describe the magnitude and the direction, 100 kilometers per hour to the north, 25 newtons to the west, okay, um, 9.81 meters per second squared down. Okay, if I'm describing the magnitude and a direction, then I've got a vector quantity. Now, yesterday you learned about three quantities, distance, position, and displacement. Since we're talking about vectors and scalars right now, I want you to tell me which of these three quantities are vectors and which are scalars. I don't care which one you mentioned first, vector, scalar, distance, displacement, or position. Just tell me one of them and tell me whether it's a vector or a scalar. Yep. Position is a vector. Good. Position is a vector. Direction matters. What's the definition for position, by the way? Do you guys remember? Anybody? Yeah, it's the location of something, where something is at a specific moment in time, where it is, the location of something. If you want to know the location of something or where something is, then you need to know a direction associated with that, right? Where is, where is Holy Trinity? relative to 7-Eleven. Okay. Well, it's not just one kilometer from 7-Eleven. Okay. If you want to know its location, you need to know it's one kilometer north of 7-Eleven. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, position, the location of something, requires a direction, therefore it's a vector. Do you, do you guys remember what the symbol for position is? Good. It's just a D with a little arrow over. What's the little arrow mean? It means what? Yeah, it means direction. It means there's a direction associated with it, so therefore it's a vector quantity. I'll tell you what, if you look on the data sheet, you haven't learned any equations yet. You will in a bit, but you haven't learned any equations yet. If you look on the equation sheet, though, or the data sheet that I gave you yesterday, you can see that there's a little cheat. It's not really a cheat because I gave it to you. It's kind of a little cheat, though for telling whether something's a vector or a scalar. If on our data sheet we see that that quantity has a little arrow over top of it, it's a vector. If we see that it doesn't have a, a, a little arrow over it, it's a scalar. Now there's lots of equations there that you're not even going to recognize right now, and that's fine. But you know right now whether all those quantities are vectors or scalars based on whether they have that little arrow over top of them or not. Position is a vector, and the units for position would be what? Meters. Those are the standard units, right? We could sometimes use kilometers or even non-metric units like miles or feet. But the standard units, the if in doubt use these units, are meters. Now, that's the same for distance and displacement as well. We'll just get that out of the way. Tell me one of these other quantities now, distance or displacement. Is that a vect vector or a scalar? I don't care which one you give me again. doesn't matter what order. Yeah. Distance is a scalar. Good. Distance is a scalar. I drove 
um, 40 kilometers to Calgary. I drove 350 kilometers to Edmonton. I swam 50 meters. Okay, I ran five kilometers. Distance is a scalar. It does not have direction associated with it. Now, sometimes you might want to say, I drove 350 kilometers north to Edmonton. That would be a vector, but that wouldn't be distance. Okay, if I'm saying 350 kilometers north, or I ran five kilometers west, or I swam uh, 50 meters um, to the left, okay, well, that's fine to describe it that way, but that's not distance. Okay, that's another quantity called displacement. Distance is simply how far something's gone without regard to the direction. What's the symbol for distance? Yeah, what does that delta mean, that upside down triangle? That's the delta, right? What does that delta, Greek letter delta, mean? Yeah, it means change, good. Um, when we're talking about a distance traveled, like we're, we're normally talking about a change, right? Like if I've moved, it's changed, right? Where I am has changed. So I need that delta in there. Okay, displacement. We'll go with that one since it's our last one. Displacement is defined as what? Yep. The change in position. And if it's the change in position, its symbol is going to be? Yep. Good. Good. If that's position, and this means change, then displacement will be delta D with a little arrow over it. Vector or scalar. Everybody knows this right now, even if you don't remember it from yesterday. With the symbol that's on the board, delta D with the arrow, you, everybody knows that this is a, a vector, right? Now, remember yesterday there was two ways we learned to find displacement. Okay, one way to find displacement was given other displacements. In other words, if I said, Christine walks 10 meters west, and then she walks another 20 meters west, those are displacements. Those are how far she's gone. Those are both changes in position. So we would add those together to get the total displacement. Christine walks, I forget what the numbers were that I used, 10 meters to the west and then 20 meters to the west. We would say 10 meters plus 20 meters gives me a displacement of 30 meters. Make sense? What should we really do in there since it's west? Let's make them negative, right? Negative 10 meters plus negative 20 meters equals 30 meters because usually we make east positive and west negative. Right? But bottom line is when we have displacements and we want to find displacement, we add them up. If, on the other hand, we said Christine started her walk 10 meters to the west of the school and she finished her walk 20 meters to the west of the school, those are positions. Those aren't how far she's gone. Those are where she is. Those are two different locations of Christine, right? She was 10 meters to the west of the school. Now she's 20 meters to the west of the school. We want to find her displacement. We're going to subtract those. Add displacements, subtract positions. Her final position was, I said, 20 meters to the west of the school. Negative 20. Subtract. Her initial position was, what do we say it was? 10 meters to the west of the school or negative 10. So in that case, it would be negative 20, subtract negative 10. Does that make sense? Add displacements to get displacement, subtract positions to get displacement. If we know the locations, initial and final, subtract them. If we know Christine walked this far and then she walked this far, then we're going to add them. But we still do want to pay attention to negative and positive based on which direction they are. This adds up to give me, by the way, negative 20 subtract negative 10 gives me what? Negative negative gives me a positive. So negative 10 plus, sorry, negative 20 plus 10 is going to give me negative 10 meters. 
or 10 meters to the west, right? We could either say negative 10 or we could say 10 meters to the west. That make sense? All right. I gave you uh, a few questions to work on on your worksheet yesterday, and I asked you to finish up the last questions, last couple questions for homework if you didn't finish them in class. Let's take a look at both of those questions that we had for homework last night, number three and number four. Number three says a boy runs 400 meters around the track, and then another 400 meters around the track again. The track is 400 meters long. The guy's where, back where he started. You guys know what we're talking about, right? We run around the track, run around the track again, okay, back at the start line. What's the boy's distance traveled? How far, is he, how far has he ran? Yep, 800 meters, right? The direction is irrelevant because dis distance is a scalar. We don't pay any attention to which way he was going. He changed direction, right? But we don't pay any attention to that. His distance traveled is just going to be 400 meters plus 400 meters is 800 meters. What's his displacement? He's back where he started. What's his displacement? Zero, right? What's his change in position? Well, his initial position is right here. His final position is right here. Doesn't matter how we got back here, his change in position is zero. So we're going to say his distance is 800, his displacement is zero meters. How come those two numbers are different? How come distance and displacement are two different numbers? A lot of times they're the same number, right? Why are they different here? Because he changed direction. Right, he changed direction. If he had to ran in a straight line, 400, then 400, his distance and displacement would both be 800, except displacement would have a direction. Same number, though. But since he changed direction as he went around the track, his displacement is zero. Okay, four. A woman begins driving her car 25 kilometers north of Calgary. Sometime later, the woman and her car are 100 kilometers north of Calgary. I want to find the distance and the displacement. Those numbers that were given here, this woman in Calgary or north of Calgary, 25 kilometers north of Calgary, is that her location or her position or is that her displacement, her change in position? That's where she is, right? That's her location. That's her position. So we're going to say, we're going to say DI, initial position is 25, and we're going to say the final position is 100. If we want to find her distance travel, let's do her displacement first, actually. Her displacement. Add them or subtract them? Subtract them. Add displacements. Add displacements. Subtract positions. These are positions. These are where she is at two different times. Subtract them. So we're going to say DF minus DI. We're going to say 100 kilometers. Let's make north positive. If north is positive, then it's 100 kilometers, positive 100 kilometers. Uh, subtract 25 kilometers, which gives me 75 kilometers. Should be, what should we say here, really? Should say probably positive 75. Positive 75. That make sense? Positive means north. Yep. Is it okay if you say north? Yeah, absolutely. If you said 75 to the north, that's okay. You have to indicate direction somehow. Okay? I define north as positive, and I'm saying positive 75, which means north. Okay? If you want to say the word north instead of the positive, that's okay too. Absolutely. Hey, what would her distance be? Seventy-five kilometers. Hey, how come her distance is the same as her displacement here? Yeah, because she didn't change direction, right? Does it make it some sense here? All right. What I'd like you to do here over the next little while here. is to take a look at uh, more of the questions on this sheet. I ask you to continue on 
uh, questions five, goes all the way up to question number nine. We'll see, see how much time I give you for it, but at least start with the first couple questions and see how they go. If we need to do another one as a class, we'll do that. Okay, if we don't, then all right, that's fine. We'll just move on. The answers to all of these questions are up here on the desk at the front here. Okay, don't just come up and copy down all the answers, but once you have some answers, you want to check them, feel free to come on up and, and take a peek at it. And, of course, as always, ask me questions. Stop me. Raise your hand. Okay? Ask me questions so that, you can, so that you can nail this. All right, let's take a look at question number six here now. Number six says a woman begins driving her, 200 km, her car 200 kilometers north of Calgary. And then she ends up 100 kilometers south of Calgary. Those numbers that were given there, 200 and 100, what are they? Are they displacements, what her position is changed by? Or are those two numbers positions or just locations? Positions. Yeah, they're positions. Right? These are where she is or where she is and where she was. Right? Her two different locations. So we're going to call this one right here DI. We're going to call this one DF. And I'm going to define north in this question as positive. It's important that we have signs established here, positive and negative, because we've got a north and a south in the same question. Right? If we had just north, we can get away without saying north is positive. If we have just south, we could get away with calling them both positive if we really wanted to. But since we have north and south, we need signs here, positive and negative. All right, let's worry about B first, displacement. I often find displacement easier to find than distance. So let's deal with that first. The displacement is either found by adding displacements or subtracting positions. We have two different positions here, so let's subtract those two positions. Right? The final position is 100 kilometers south of Calgary. It's negative 100. Does that make sense? Negative 100 because the final position is 100 to the south. The initial position... Well, we're going to subtract the initial position, which is positive 200. Because it's positive 200 because it's to the north, right? So negative 100, subtract 200, gives me negative 300 kilometers. Or what else could we say instead of negative 300? We could have said 300 to the, 300 to the south. Does that make sense? All right. Now, what's the distance traveled by this woman and her car? Three hundred kilometers. Why? She didn't change direction. But wait, there's a north and a south in that question. She changed direction, right? No, she didn't. She started north. She ended up south. But the whole time she was traveling, she was traveling south. She was moving south the whole time, right? She didn't change direction at all. So, therefore, her distance will be the same as her displacement. Okay, I want you to finish up the rest of those questions for homework if you haven't done that or if you haven't finished them up already. And we'll take a look at uh, all of the rest of those questions on Monday if we need to.